Are tactical pens really useful for self-defense? Well, I'm about to share some information with you that might change your mind. I'm also going to share with you three of the most common grips utilized for self-defense with a tactical pen. Two I feel are good to go, and one of them I highly unrecommend. Over the years, I've had quite a few discussions with peers, students, friends, family members, all on the tactical pen. And many of the uh, comments that I receive sometimes are comical to me because they sound basically like what I'm about to explain to you, which is they're a novelty item and they're pretty cool gifts for retired law enforcement, military veterans, Active, active duty military, but as far as it really being a practical self-defense tool, not really. Now I want to go ahead and share an analogy with you that I share with them. I have a three-year-old niece, and we play fight quite often, of course I'm her uncle, always trying to develop those self-defense skills, and to her we're just playing and having some fun. Then she comes at me with these, her little hands and her little fists. And if I place my hand on a table and she'll sit there and just jam with her little fists, and it's comical and it's good fun, and of course, I leave my hands there. What if I were to put this tactical pen in my niece's hand with zero training, just having her regular, let's say, uh, hammer fist, and the same analogy here where I'm going to leave my hand on a table and she's gonna go ahead and deploy her little hammer fists. Now keep in mind, it's not her little skin and bone and muscle tissue anymore. Now, it's the business end, tungsten tip, skull crusher. Even with her tiny little fists, the question that I wanna to pose to you is, would you leave your hand there or would you move it the hell out of the way? I know what I would do. So if a three-year-old child can intimidate me, what do you think an assailant would feel if you're coming at them and just start deploying hammer fists with the business end of your tactical pen? So I ask you once again, do you think that a tactical pen is useful for self-defense? For this analogy to work that I just shared with you, your pen's already gonna have to be at the ready because you haven't trained with it yet. So it needs to be deployed in your hand, in that hammer fist position before the encounter were ever to happen. There are also other factors such as situational awareness that make a huge impact on the outcome of an encounter with a tactical pen or without. And I'll get into situational awareness in much more detail in upcoming videos in this series. Three popular grips with the tactical pen. First off, we have the forward grip. Forward grip basically means your business end or the tungsten tip is facing forward. Take your pen, wrap your hand around it, thumb is extended forward, and I'll bring my little kettlebell in as an example here, and I'm thrusting, thrusting forward. Keep in mind here that all five of my fingers are in contact and securing this tool or tactical pen. Got your forward grip. Reverse grip, tip is now down. This is also my preferred grip because of being able to back up the tactical pen with my thumb. So as I were to deploy strikes, I'm getting that much more power. Once again, all five of my fingers are in contact with this tactical pen. Thrusting forward, down in a hammer fist position, and utilizing that thumb as basically a backstop. Now, the third popular grip that I feel is a no-go is a key grip. And basically the way that you would wrap your keys or your car keys, you would put your tactical pen in between those two fingers and be able to thrust forward, okay? So 
As you can tell here, there's some room for error. We're talking about a self-defense, an altercation, where your heart is beating through your chest, you're sweating, you're choking on your breath because you can't even exhale, because your limbic system's taking over and all sorts of information is flying into your brain and being processed by your brain in those split seconds. So as I'm sitting here and throwing these blows, there's a very good chance I'm gonna end up disarming myself before I even get started. Also, as I'm here and I'm thrusting forward, when I'm really thrusting forward, this is hurting me because it's going right against all this soft tissue here. So I might cause more inju injury for myself, especially if I'm hitting something hard. What if you hit their belt or something metal in their pocket? Now you're really taking yourself out of commission before you even have a chance to save yourself. The other thing is, as we mentioned, on the first two grips that I showed you, there were five fingers in my hand that made contact with the tool or with the tactical pen. With this grip, I basically have two fingers doing all the work and relying on only two fingers when I could be relying on five. To me, that's unacceptable and definitely what I consider a tourniquet, which is a last resort grip in this instance. As you can imagine, I am just scratching the surface here with this information, especially when it comes to the types of grips that we're utilizing and more detail on those specific grips. But my advice to you is check out my tactical pen course on the Atomic Bears Academy and get that information, own that information, because that information might save your life or a loved one's life someday. Be sure to check out my next video in this series where I discuss a topic that was posed to me recently by one of my subscribers. And he seems to think that the problem with the tactical pen is that you need to be highly skilled to be effective with it. Do you really? Stay tuned.